Welcome back to Vampire. Look at Clayton Darby's walk. Such... Such a saunter. Such swag or something. I'm not sure what the right word would be. Something going on here. Anyway, um, so the next thing I want to do is rest so I can get my, uh, put my XP to use. However, I'm worried about the health of the district. It's not doing very well. So before I sleep and potentially have the health of the district go down even further, I want to make sure I heal as many people as possible. There's two people that I can heal. One other person has a migraine, but I'm not able to actually make the solution for that. But I can cure somebody of bronchitis and fatigue. District. Right. Good evening. Starting with Clayton Darby, who has fatigue. Do you need us? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what? If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Next up, Petrescu has bronchitis. Do you need some... Um... Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor. <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Also, before I sleep, I just realized that there's somebody here who I've never spoken with. Would you like me to revive you? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick, though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. I see what you mean. Good one. Level four, mesmerize. How are you doing? Oh, they have fatigue too. Well, I'm glad I made an extra fatigue potion. Or treatment. For some reason, just because I'm playing a game, I feel like calling anything that does any sort of healing a potion. But like, to me, a potion implies some sort of magical properties. And this is definitely not magical. It's a... Uh... Actually, I don't know what it is. What would a treatment for fatigue actually be? A bunch of B12 vitamins and caffeine? I don't know. Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. Completely free, don't worry about it. I'm shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors, or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Fair enough. Um, I'll just back off. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time, until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Fair enough. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. New hint. Wow, there's some really bad options here, huh? I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. I wonder how I could get these other hints. I guess maybe now that I've spoken with them, I can maybe learn more about 
Papa, Popa from the other people? I'm not exactly sure how that works. But I don't think I'm going to get these hints from Christina themselves. That option, by the way, the three options, basically, I don't judge you or, you know, the two other ones that are even worse. The I don't judge you is the best one, but it's still not good. The implication of what Jonathan said is still that it's, I don't judge you, you did what you have to do. But the subtext there is what you're doing is not good and you shouldn't do it. So it's still bad. It's just the best out of the all three of them. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Okay, let's go rest. All right, let's see if the health status changes overnight after we rest. So it's starting out at 76%. I haven't decided what I want just yet, but I've noticed a couple things of interest. So you know this tactical ability here, Spring, the one that makes me move right up in uh, an enemy's face and how it kind of sucks right now? So currently it just moves me there and does 20 damage, which is honestly like pretty much nothing. But if you follow it down the line and see what it's going to do in the future, I think it actually could be pretty good. So when you have the split here, these two different lines are basically diverging progression paths that uh, specialize the ability in different ways. So if you follow this line here, you basically focus on making it do more damage. So you see this one right now does 20, then 40. And then if we go here, it goes way up to 120, 200, 250. So it really starts focusing down on the damage. If you go this way, on the other hand, it it does increase... Eh, well, actually, the damage goes to 50 for the first one and then stays at 50. But the big difference is it deals stun damage. 15 stun, 20 stun, 30 stun. Uh, so you concentrate your blood in your hands and feet to increase the impact on your target. If your target is already stunned, you embrace them automatically. That would be really good because being able to bite an enemy is super important. I mean, you know, how much blood I have is tied to my ability to heal, my ability to use all sorts of other abilities that deal tons of damage. So I definitely want to focus on being able to uh, embrace people and get their blood. Super important. So if I can get it to this point, which I can't right now, you have to be level 12 to actually specialize it to this point. But if I could get it here, that could be pretty good. At this level and at this level, it's meh. It's not really useful. Also another thing I've noticed, coagulation, which I don't even have yet. Um, you'll block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. First comment. That is super fucking gross. Coagulation. Blocking their blood in their veins. For two seconds. Imagine if for two seconds all your blood coagulated. Well, for one, I'm pretty sure you'd die or something. I I'm pretty sure it'd have some pretty permanent bad effects, but... Also, that's just disgusting. Ew. More importantly, it uh, makes them stop for two seconds at this level, three seconds at this level, and notice, by the way, that the cost of blood is none. It has a long recovery time, but it actually doesn't cost anything to use. So you might as well just use this as much as possible. I think this is actually a pretty valuable skill, and it gets even better when you specialize. The target's blood will now... Oh, this is disgusting. The tar target's blood will now burst out of their body, flowing towards your mouth to feed you without touching your prey. I want to know what that looks like. Also, that is disgusting and awesome. Also, ew. And uh, each progressing level of this gives you a little bit more blood. Now, it doesn't give you much blood, right? This is 10... 10 blood, 15 blood, 20 blood. I don't believe that's very much... Um, I'm not sure how to see how much blood I have right now, but I'm pretty sure that's not that much. But regardless, it doesn't actually cost any blood to cast it. So every 20 seconds, you, you can be getting a little bit of blood and also making your uh, opponent just completely stop in their tracks for three seconds if you get it up to this point. So this, this will actually be a really good ability down the road, I think. For now, let's go ahead and get the first level because it's super cheap. Well, sort of cheap, 600 XP. I think I want to focus on getting the first level of all these different abilities for the most part, except maybe Shadow Veil, which allows you to become invisible. Not too interested in that. But uh, especially these, I want to get one of each because if you notice the damage type, this one is normal damage. This one is blood damage and this one is, I guess, shadow damage. And I haven't really been paying attention to opponents' defenses. 
But if I have one of every type, then I can actually look at their defenses, theoretically, if I ever bother to, and use the thing that they're, well, not well defended against. So it'd be good to diversify. Also, I'm noticing a theme. It looks like the bottom specialization for each ability is focused on blood, and the top one is focused on damage. If you look at this, 250 damage, 300 damage, and then if you go down below to blood, the damage actually goes way down from 300 to 30. But it makes all these, uh, says all targets within this area are struck constantly by slithers of darkness, causing them to bleed. The vampire will directly absorb the blood from the wounds. And each successive one increases the damage by a little bit, and I assume increases the blood that you get from them as well. So it seems to be a commonality. Oh, hold on. Hello. Ultimate? That's the first time I think I've been able to get these. Uh, but let's read them. So I guess the thing about ultimates, uh, none of them have any cost of blood, but they have very long recovery times. Right, first one, Rage. You lose control and let the beast take over for a short time. The beast teleports itself to all enemies around you and strikes them with furious blows. So... Does it just basically do 200 damage to all enemies around you? Abyss. You create a shadow vortex at your target's feet. Coming to life, the shadows interrupt an enemy in the area and inflict tremendous damage. Blood Cauldron. You focus your power to boil, to boil your target's blood, causing it to violently explode, dealing damage to the target and anything nearby. That is also disgusting. There's so many disturbing abilities in this game. Uh, how, how much does it cost to actually get this? Just a thousand for the first level. And they don't have any specialization, it looks like. <laughs> the top one does 2,000 shadow damage, wow. Yeah, no specialization for these. Okay, you know what? Maybe instead of Shadow Mist, I should get an ultimate. That would definitely help with the beasts. So, the way I'm reading this is Rage is basically an AoE, right? It does a relatively small, or not small, but moderate amount of damage to all enemies around you. Shadow Mist does a lot of damage to one target. And what the hell is Blood Cauldron? Like... I'm a little bit confused. At the top it says 400 blood. As in 400 blood damage, right? But then down below, a little bit lower, right below the range, it says 230 damage. And it's got the blood symbol. I don't understand. Does it do 400 blood damage or 230? None of these others have that second damage listing below the range. So I'm not really sure what that means. Dealing damage to the target and anything nearby. So this is very AoE, this is single target, and this is sort of in between. It deals, I guess, a significant amount of damage to a single target and anything near it. I'm gonna go ahead and get Blood Cauldron. I wanna get Abyss, but I don't know, I feel like this is cooler. Let's read the full flavor text here. Some abilities are so powerful that even vampires fear them. Blood Cauldron is one such ability. The vampire concentrates their power on one target and makes the victim's blood boil. Through this process, the vampire will regenerate and absorb part of the target's blood. Oh, nice. The vampire will release their prey after a few seconds, leaving damaging blood cells within them. These cells will continue to impact their host before exploding after a short time. The blast will affect any living creature near the host. Because of its dark nature, this type of ability cannot be used too often. Controlling blood is one thing, modifying the blood cells is another. Oh, that's even better than I thought. So the second blood listing for 230 is probably how much blood I absorb? Which, if so, is a hell of a lot of blood. Nice. So it's sort of like putting a timed explosive on them, it sounds like. You, like, feed on them, take their, uh, take their blood, and then they'll explode a short time after. Okay. I think I also want to get more blood from Bites. Let's get the next level of Thirst. Never mind, I can't. Next one takes 600. Hmm. 
Health, endurance, heal from biting, syringes, bullets. I still don't care about doing more damage with my bite. I mean, maybe if it does 1,400% damage, that'll be pretty significant, but... Eh. Let's get more health. The following night. Whoa. Futile police raids in Whitechapel. As of late, the rumors that surround Whitechapel are ripening into facts. In the last three months, the police have suspected the district of hosting what might be the heart of London's medicinal black market. But of course, these suspicions will remain assumptions, for no task force or additional police presence has been sent to Whitechapel. No large drug stocks have been found, nor no crime lords arrested. This masquerade has only been planned as a desperate attempt to conceal the blatant incompetence of the London City Council's Board of Health by giving the populace a cheap and easy victory while the epidemic spreads more and more each day. Worst of all, when you take time to review the most recent statistics, you discover that the District of Whitechapel is coping with the disease much better than other parts of the city. Is it a miracle? Evidence of the activity of an illegal but efficient medical underground? More proof of the authorities' criminal incompetence? All I know is this. If a Londoner has a better chance to survive the epidemic by choosing to live in this godforsaken borough, I am ready to move to any cheap flea-infested flat some shady landlord will agree to rent me right now. And look at that! We've gone from serious to stable, up from 70-something to 85%. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah, major event. Your choice concerning the community pillar. Ah, oh, right. Dorothy is listed as the pillar in the center. Have been reported by the press. And your actions have impacted the borough's economy. Huh. In a good way? Is it the more stable it is, the better the price is or something? Should also look into upgrading my weapons if I can. Let's go ahead and recycle all this stuff. So it's just going to give us a bunch of things, like boxes of pills give you various... Uh, various medicines, chemicals, the bottles give you also some chemicals and glass vials. The bags of junk give you things you can use to upgrade your weapons with, I think. Lead stick, lead rod, lead plate. Yeah, let's just recycle it all. Ah, oh, we can upgrade our common scythe. From... Oh. Oh, it actually changes the name of the scythe. So we're going from a used scythe to a common scythe. And a good scythe. Remark <laughs> remarkable scythe. Perfect scythe. Yes, yeah, so we're going from a 99 damage to 106, which is a small but significant upgrade. Yeah, and there's also a tutorial prompt, I guess, that said that it gives you access to a customization slot. That would be one of these. It takes aluminum shards and aluminum powder, of which I have many. So it must be one or the other. Increase damage dealt by 10%, or absorb blood points when the weapon hits. Oh, that is so tempting. Ah, uh, from 106 damage to 116, or absorb 2.5 blood points when the weapon hits. I mean, that's not much blood, but it's going to add up. Do I want to go kind of like... all in on blood? It is alluring. Uh, what do all these customization slots do? Are they all the same? Yeah, they're all the same. So you can just like continue to stack the damage, or continue to stack the blood absorption, or do both if you want. I need six common handle parts to turn into a good scythe. Hmm. Let's increase blood absorption. Let's see if I can do anything. With the revolver? Yes, I can. Do I want to do the revolver or the shotgun? And also, what do these things... What do these um, customizations do? So, increase to damage. Decrease reloading time. Ooh, that's good. Is it the same for this? It is. But the difference with these weapons is that um, your options actually change down the line. Better firing rate. Um, stun points added. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I have ammo for the pistol more often. So, let's do that. 
Now I've got a common revolver. Oh, I've got tons of these points. Not enough to get it to a good revolver, but let's choose a special specialization. Mm. Oh, this is actually hard. Reload time or damage? Let's decrease... Uh, uh, no, let's do damage. Okay. Cool. Alright, I just have to try out these new combat abilities. So I'm over here where I was before, where I got my ass handed to me. Need to retrieve Barrett Lewis's box. Let's go for it. So, what do I have new? Well, aside from just having more health and um, having upgraded weapons so they do more damage, in particular, I have my ultimate that I can now use, and um, my double-handed scythe also will give me a little bit of blood back. Ooh, take a look at how much blood I get back for each hit, the 2.5. I actually saw my bar move just from one hit. That's actually significant! So, what, what actually is my blood right now? Yeah, you get back 2.5. My max blood right now is only 105. So, I mean, that's basically roughly about 2.5% of my blood for every hit. That's actually really good. That super adds up. That's way more valuable than I thought. Because I wasn't sure what my max blood was. Want some of this? Alright, the real test is going to be the beasts. Okay, oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad, actually. Its most resistant thing is it's resistant to blood, which is the type of damage that my ultimate does. And it's moderately resistant to physical damage. So, best thing is guns and shadow. I mean, gun I can sort of do. Shadow, I don't have anything that does shadow damage. Well, I guess I chose the wrong ultimate for this kind of creature. I might as well still use my ultimate, though. It's going to give me some blood, and it will do some damage. In the meantime, I can test out the pistol. Yeah, I'm just going to use my ultimate right away. I guess right after I get a special hit in. Explode. Oh, it exploded. That did a decent amount of damage. Bad. I mean, I certainly don't have the pistol ammo to just keep doing that, though. What do I have now? Ten shots. Still, I, I think I can take on the rest of them. How is my ultimate looking, by the way? Is there an easy way to check whether... I'm not sure how to bring up, like, the list of abilities on the bottom right hand of the screen so I can see whether my ultimate is back. I guess it's back. Two 
two rogue skulls, skulls rather. Beast is over there, so I think we're safe to just drop down. I suck at pairing. I really do suck at pairing, wow. Alright, let's end this. So satisfying. Second beast, where... Where are you? Wasn't it right here? Oh, I could just go through that. Oh, oh, there you are. Almost out of ammo though. I mean as soon as I run out of ammo, this killing these beasts is gonna get a lot harder. I need to upgrade my autophagy skill, it doesn't really heal that much. Okay, where the bloody hell is that box? Ah, you can go up higher. This could be the box. Lewis thought he Small box. Barrett, there's no easy way to say it, so I'm going to be blunt. We can't keep on like this. At least I can't keep on like this. If Joe ever finds out about us, about his wife and his best friend, it will crush him. And then he will kill you. We had some good time together, but let's face it, I'm never going to be your Jane Lewis. You know it, and I know it too. So I'm ending this, right here and right now. If you agree with my decision, I'm sure we'll find a way to be happy again. 
you, Joe, and me in time. And then the most important part of our story will have been preserved. Until that day, I wish you'd forgive me. Goodbye for now, Jane Peterson. It's quite a sordid friendship. A love letter from Joe Peterson's wife addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who should I give it to, I wonder? Oh, that's my decision. Either Barrett Lewis or Joe Peterson. Yeah, so we got Barrett Lewis, the shopkeeper, Joe Peterson, the thug. And then we have the fact that they used to be friends, and then they became not friends, and now Joe Peterson is trying to extort money from Barrett Lewis, and also Barrett Lewis apparently had an affair with his wife, who's now dead. Wow. There's a lot going on in that relationship. So, here's my reasoning. I'm gonna give it to Barrett Lewis, not because I like Barrett Lewis more, I think they're both Barrett Lewis and Joe Peterson are pricks, and I hope to eventually bite their necks and suck their sweet, sweet XP. Joe. They're about to have an argument that they've had like four times, the dialogue just keeps repeating. Um, but I'm gonna give it to Barrett Lewis, because if I give it to Joe Peterson, and they learn that Barrett Lewis uh, was having an affair with his now deceased wife, um, Joe Peterson is gonna kill Barrett Lewis. And I don't want them to do that. Not because I like Barrett Lewis, be but because I want to kill Barrett Lewis and get their blood. Please, I don't have your money. Come on, Barrett, you know the game. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Uh, hold on, I just want to check something. Where... Where did you go? Joe Peterson, okay. Dang. I was hoping they would just stay there, in their spot where they were having a conversation with Barrett. And just listen in on the conversation. <laughs> oh well. I found this box in an abandoned building nearby. I believe it belongs to you. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is mine. So, you face those loons that roam around there. Extraordinary. I suppose I was lucky. Luck is a commodity round here. Yours should be properly rewarded. About this package, it's not just tools and trinkets, is it? I want to be rude or anything after your kind gesture, but it's none of your business. I already read it. Yeah, I suppose if I didn't actually examine the box, I could have just given them the box without examining it, and I never would have known that there's even an affair. Right? I think? Then again, Jonathan did say something about it. I'm not sure. You probably would have known. Have I opened up any new dialogue? Ah, I did. Barrett, you had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Do you mean you're Harry's father? No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. Oh, I don't know. I think you would have been pretty shitty. 4,000 XP. Delicious. Unfortunately, I need Mesmerize for her. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Right then, show me what you have. Change of topic. Didn't find anything worth buying from Barrett Lewis. I'm just going to talk to some of the people I've already talked with now that it's a new day and the district status has changed and all that. I want to see if there's any new avenues of conversations. And there is with Clayton Darby. Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. Uh... I'm talking with Camellia again. Why is there a new hint that says, Give me a smile, partner. I can't help but read that in like a southern ridiculous accent. I'm, I'm sorry, give me a smile, 
partner. Is it because I'm sort of working with uh, Dorothy Crane? Still, what the hell? That is a really weird thing to say. Also, telling somebody who doesn't want to and or can't talk, especially a woman, to give me a smile is... Uh, you. But it's a, it's a hint, though. What? I gotta try it. Hello, Camellia. How are you, partner? That's different. Come on, girl. Never mind, it's Smile. not different. Don't you know Dorothy and I have an agreement? We're on the same side. No? All right then, as you wish. Jonathan, you suck. Very well. Like, really, Jonathan is genuinely not really... A, they're kind of annoying and just a little bit shitty. I was just smashing through the dialogue with uh, Father Tobias Whittaker, the person who talks about doom and gloom and the apocalypse and save your soul and all that crap. Didn't want to actually read what they were saying or hear what they were saying. So I was just smashing through it, but apparently they gave me a new hint. Something about cleansing the city. Cleanse. Tell me, Tobias, what exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. God will recognize their own. Do you mean humans or white people? Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small-time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool. Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Interesting. Oh, I can't wait to eat them. I'm so gonna eat them. I hate them. Unfortunately, though, I've gotta wait. Um, I still want to do this Holy Crusade quest, which I'm sure would disappear if I ate them. Plus, I need Mesmerize level 5, so it's actually going to be quite a while. Alright, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I suppose I'll return back to the hospital and report back to Lady Ashbury. <laughs>